Kenton and Lindsay Stacy grew up in Greenville, Ohio, a small farming town near the Indiana border. Married for 15 years, they have four children, two boys and two girls. And then I met in high school. He sat beside me in study hall freshman year and just kind of ended up liking each other and then started dating on and off probably our whole sophomore year. And then our junior and senior year, we were exclusive. After graduating in 2002, they began chasing their dreams. He wanted to be a firefighter. She was interested in hospitality and travel. He was really focused. He actually joined the Navy because he wanted to be a fireman and there was no full-time work. He was on two auxiliary teams and he was looking for full-time work. I was looking in the newspaper and there was a 1-800 number and it said nothing about the Navy, but he ended up calling, it was the Navy, and from you know, there he joined. So. Kenton went into the Navy in August 2005, and um, Kenton and I were already married when he joined. He went off to boot camp, then he went to A school, and after A school, he went down to um, dive school and then through EOD school. I'm A Officer Stacy, uh, U.S. Navy, stationed out here in Fob Brass Femora, Iraq. I'd like to wish my wife Lindsay and son Logan a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Uh, there in Greenville, Ohio. It just reassures you, hearing their voice, that they're okay. And I feel like you really don't know what's going on until they get home. During training, Kenton felt drawn to the work and to the people. He's always been a thrill seeker. It's a perilous job. Some 150 bomb technicians in all branches of the service have been killed, and 250 others injured since 9-11. He went through four combat tours in nine years. The deployments took him to Iraq, Afghanistan, and Syria. It's hard how dangerous their job is when they're gone and um, just holding down the fort here. The constant changes. On November 9th, 2017, Kenton was in Raqqa, helping to clear ISIS explosive devices from a hospital. On the other side of the world, standing in a hotel parking lot at Legoland, Lindsay Stacy felt her cell phone vibrate. She looked at the screen and recognized the area code. I saw an 808 number come up, which is usually the sat phone, because he had started calling on the sat phone this time towards the end of it. So I thought it was Kenton. It was Kenton's commanding officer. There'd been an explosion. But I just remember getting off the phone and just being shocked and just couldn't believe, like, what had happened. So I'm going to talk to about Chief Kent Stacy, who is an American hero, is training his guys, and they'd been in and out of this one, one room three or four times, and something just wasn't right. So as the professional he was, he went in the room, and when he went in the room, an IED went off. They don't know if Chief Stacy's going to live, but they assembled a team, and in 12 hours, that team is assembled and on the way to Baghdad, Iraq. Every person in that chain had to be in the exact location at the exact right time to make this system work. Four times his heart stopped beating, and four times they brought him back. He had more than a dozen surgeries in two days, went through 42 pints of blood. The blast left him paralyzed from the chest down and blind in the left eye. It blew out six inches of his trachea, but he was alive. He was in San Antonio at BMC, then he went to Houston, and they finally medevaced him back out here to San Diego, and he was at Kindred, Kindred to Balboa, and then Balboa to um, the VA. So five hospitals, around 18 months. But it was about 22 months since he'd actually been physically home, because he was about three weeks away from coming home from his deployment when he got hurt. Um, we finally got to bring him home in April. It was a wonderful day. We had a lot of support from his community. Everyone was here to welcome him home. And we've just been in integrating him back into life. And uh, yeah, just trying to get into a routine here with him and the kids. I feel like every day's different, but Kitten's usually up in his chair about mid-morning 
Some weeks he has appointments, some weeks he doesn't, or we'll do telehealth appointments where it's through FaceTime. He's doing the NeuroX therapy twice a week and trying to get him out and doing more things. It's just, it's a hard life, but we've gotten through it, so. Thank you.